think a, a key aspect of this is just very, very clear communication to the members about what a buy-in is, because up until um, the mini budget a couple of years ago, um, many schemes or many trustees probably wouldn't have any concept about what a buy-in is, and that extends down to the members. So um, I think clear, clear communication is a key aspect of that. So just going back to absolute basics about what this is. So a buy-in is, as I describe it, is, a, is effectively a very sophisticated investment decision. The scheme and the trustee are still responsible for paying those benefits, but they're being matched by the income streams from the insurer. But this is all part of a journey to secure those benefits in full when those um, when the bulk annuity policy is converted into ind individual policies with each member. So to me, it's a good news story, and I think um, it should always be portrayed as that. I think one of the most important things is to have clear communications from the trustee at the point of transacting. Of these communications to make clear to the members the, the benefits of the transaction and why they've chosen to do it. So for example, bringing out the additional security that the members now have and that they're now under the financial services compensation scheme. I think it's important as well to have a plan to deal with any additional calls or queries um, at higher volumes that you might get after the transaction as members have queries, especially members who are potentially halfway through a, a retirement process, they'll want to know what does it mean for them to so having a plan of how to answer all those queries. We often find as well that a member's first experience of an insurer is when they come to request a quote, so a retirement quote or a transfer value quote. I think there's a couple of things that can make that a, a positive experience for members. So I think firstly, it's important to set clear expectations of timescales so letting members know it might take a little bit longer than previous quotes if it needs to go through an insurer as well and making sure that they're, they're expecting that. But alongside that, it's important to partner with an insurer with a, a strong track record of meeting service level agreements. So while the member might have to wait an extra week, say, they're not waiting months and months to receive that quotation. I think really from the member perspective, the, it's, it's been really clear on what the expectation is of the member. And I think that's where trustees are really able to give the insight that there may be particular historic issues that need to be addressed in terms of previous uh, discretions, any sort of practice. Um, so that's really captured in the insurer's ability to service that and by and large provide a seamless transition from the world that they're used to, to the insurer world. So I think it's really been very clear what the expectation is in the way that people are communicated to and how that will work. I think in an ideal world, we'd have standardized member communication letters and, and things like that um, as an industry that we could use. And necessarily they'd need to be tweaked for each scheme because every scheme is different. But if we had a standard approach at the start, I think that would really help um, matters and also make it more streamlined rather than kind of having to create everything from scratch every time. But I think it, this is something that's worth getting right. Scheme members are at the heart of these transactions and we need to try our best to put them in mind and, and, and think about how they'll receive the transaction and how best to reassure them. Mm -hmm.